Welcome to the Parenting with Impact podcast with your hosts, Elaine Taylor-Klaus and Diane Dempster, co-creators of ImpactParents.com, an online community, award-winning blog, and service organization, helping parents all over the world to raise complex kids become capable, independent adults. Hi, everyone. Elaine and Diane here. And we know that you want your complex kids to grow up to be happy and independent. And yet you're not always sure how or when to help with that. In this podcast, we'll encourage you to collaborate with all kinds of complex kids and support them in navigating life and learning. And we'll interview leading experts from around the world, as well as parents in our own community, talking about how training for parents actually helps these complex kids. We'll talk about the issues we hear parents struggling with all the time and how a coach approach can support and empower your amazing young people. We won't tell you what to do. We're going to help you figure out how. So let's move on to the next conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode in the Parenting with Impact podcast. Um, Diane and I are really excited to be having a conversation today with the college spy, otherwise known as Michelle McEnany. But, you know, the college spy is such a good name that would, we may just call you spy girl. But Oh, wait, um, I like that. Yeah. You like need spy glass or something fun. Okay. So yeah, Michelle, Michelle is really to have you here. Michelle is a new friend, so we're excited to introduce her to you guys as well. Tell us a little bit about your backstory and how you got into being the college spy and what the college spy is all about. Sure. Thanks for having me. Um, So the way I got into being the college spy is I used to be a school counselor and I made a change in 2015. My husband got an online job uh, before it was popular. And I thought, well, I don't need to be in one place anymore. Let's go. And I decided to really blow up the part of being a school counselor that I loved, which was the college admissions piece. And I turned myself into an online independent educational consultant, sometimes known as a college coach or a college admissions consultant. And it was a really big deal back then that I was meeting with my students on Zoom. And it's no longer such a big deal. Right. Yeah. We felt like when the when the uh, uh, pandemic hit, the rest of the world joined us. Right. Like we've been doing this for so long. Zoom got really crowded. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And people were talking about Zoom fatigue and how they were so sick of these meetings. And I'm like, I love these meetings. What are you talking about? I'm so with you. I love that. So do you work with the parents or the students or like what's your what's your approach? I work with both. So I I help students and and parents through the college admissions process. So we're building college lists. We are uh, doing the applications and the essays. And I'm answering a lot of questions in between and really drawing from my school counseling background and how schools work in order to help advise families. So I mostly meet with students about every other week. And then as we get into essays every week, and then kind of schedule periodic meetings at certain points in the process with parents. So the College Spy is a, it's kind of a, it's a high touch concierge level service when it's one-on-one, but I do also offer group work for students, um, group coaching, which is, you know, it's just cheaper. Put them all in the group. And yeah. It's a little more affordable. Um, oh, and I do that. application camps. Yep. Application boot camps and um, college essay workshops. And I have a parenting course, college admissions 101. So uh, there's a lot of things we offer. So, so what makes this work that you do relevant to our audience of parents of complex kids? I work with a lot of complex kids. So when I made the switch, I took Mm -hmm. the seven credit graduate program certificate course. And what I learned there was that a lot of people were afraid of working with students with learning differences. Specifically, they were worried about the IPs, the 504s, the process. And I thought, I'm the 504 coordinator at my school. I'm not worried about this one bit. And I was like, oh, I can really, this is a niche for me. I, I don't think I realized that there was going to be a concern Amongst to specialize with that group. And so I don't work exclusively with students with learning differences, um, but I, a lot of students with learning differences will come to me. So, well, so um, let's open up the conversation because I want to talk a little bit about what is it that parents need yeah. to be thinking about when they're thinking about 
their kid going off to college? When do they start thinking about it? What do they, you know, it's this sort of process of it. Elaine, I don't know if you want to bottom line. Well, yes. And I just want, I really want to target because there is something different about the college process when you've got a kid with complex issues, Yeah, whether they have a 504 or an IEP or not with, when you've got a complex kid, it changes the the whole dynamic of it, because not only the process of where do I apply and how do I apply and how do I go through all of the executive function to get there. Um, so all of that, but all of the the kids issues of can I really do this? Should I do this? How do I like there's so much more involved when you've got complex kids. Right. Yeah, so what do parents need to understand in that context? Well, many things, but. Okay. They need to start early because if they don't start the process early, they're going to be nervous and they're going to feel stressed. Like there's too much to learn and it's going to be overwhelming. And as they're starting early, what they need to remember is that their child's going to change and grow over time. So what your kid is busy doing in ninth grade when you're starting maybe to investigate it that early is different than what they're going to be doing in 11th grade. They're going to grow and change and their skills are going to be greater. And so I think as parents are doing it, don't panic. Don't don't panic. And also, and really have your research help you open up options and understand what are all the options for students. And they're so that when you get to the point where it's a little bit more clear what they're going to be able to handle post-secondary, you you'll make the right decision for them. So I'm really interested in that language. You'll make the right decision for them, because as I'm hearing what you're saying in ninth grade, as parents, we're still kind of leading the bus. A lot of the time we're still driving the bus. But by 11th grade, part of the whole framework is they're driving the or We're trying to get them to drive the bus. And so we're ideally we're not making the decision for them. We're enrolling them in the process of making how to make decisions for themselves. So if the parent is starting early and still leading and then it's transitioning, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that I actually said for them, as you were talking about it, I'm like, oh yeah, she really caught me doing that. (laughs) Yeah. It should be with them. It should be with them. Um, And, and I think in practice, it's not always that way. This is what I'm seeing in my practice that a lot of parents whether their kids are neurodivergent or not, like they're really hands-on. And that's after hiring somebody to help, really hands-on. And I think that there's a lot of fear when your child has a learning difference and they have an IEP or a 504 because parents, what I'm noticing is parents have struggled with the school and or schools a lot. For so long. And they, they, yeah. they're, they're advocating and advocating and people are constantly telling them no. And it's different in college. In yeah. college, the Office of Disabilities, sometimes called the Office of Accessibilities, often says yes. And that switch is extru- is hard for, for, for families to make. So they're, as the student is going through the admissions process, getting towards that point where they're in college, I see parents holding on really, really tightly and they're really frightened. Yeah. Well, and I think the other piece of it, and you alluded to this earlier, is if if you've been thinking about this since ninth grade, and we know that most of these neurodivergent kids are three to five years behind their peers, they're not ready to start thinking about college in ninth grade beyond dreaming about college. And a lot of times, even when they're a junior or senior, they don't have the executive function to do the things that they need to do to make it happen. I mean, you've got this dynamic. We talk about the independence paradox where they want to be more independent than they're practically able to be. And the parents are are told sometimes by the colleges, even you need to stay out of this completely. This should be the kid and the kids to own this. And these kids aren't, aren't ready to own it. And so there's this dynamic of incongruency that makes it hard and the messaging what do you say to parents to find that balance between helping them find their their right solution versus finding it for them? It depends on the parent, what I say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. the truth. Totally get it. Parent, as parents developmentally with their child are ready to hear certain pieces and others 
aren't ready at all. And for some, you're just planting the seeds. Maybe you'll, because I have these long relationships with parents, right? So I might start working with them in 10th grade or it could be a little later, but um, so I might plant seeds and then water them later because there's an opening where they're ready. Because if you alienate them, you can't help them, right? Now yeah. they're just mad at you. They feel you don't understand. And, um, and, and I need to understand. I need to be listening, right? To the kids and to the parents and really understand where they're coming from so that we can help move them to where they need to be, but really where their child needs to be. If the kid is going to a four-year college and is going to live independently and be doing their work independently. So what I say definitely depends on the parent, you know, and for me, this is, um, it's a business, right? Like parents need to be happy. And some parents really just want me to help their kids get in. And they do not want to talk about the fact that what I'm worried about is they're going to do okay when they get in because some yeah. kids should have be on a gap year or some kids are, we need to build in tons of supports that maybe over time in college will be pulled away as it, because independence is coming later. Um, so it's a, it's a complex job. It is a complex job. So, so I have two questions now that I want to ask you when we come back, let's take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hi, it's Elaine. And if you like this podcast, you'll love our coach approach. Whether you're a parent looking for support or a professional supporting families, we invite you to download a free guide with 12 key coaching tools at impactparents.com slash gift. You can begin using a coach approach to help kids become more independent or improve all of your conversations at work and at home. That's impactparents.com slash gift. So welcome back. Our guest is Michelle McEnany, and she's the college spy. We're talking about the college process for for parenting and for parents of complex kids and the kids themselves. And you were just talking about how complex this situation is. And there's so many dynamics because there's all this stuff about the parents and then there's all this stuff about the kids. And then there's what's going to happen when the kids actually get there. You know, I remember this mom said to us once who was in one of our groups, she said, you know, we spend all of this money sending our kids to college. Why don't we invest a little bit in ourselves and helping get them ready to be successful when they get there? And so I love that, that awareness that you just brought. The question I want to pose to you is that I understand the story of starting early. And, you know, I know that as a parent of complex kids in ninth grade, I certainly wasn't really ready to think about it. And I have a one of my kids is a is actually a very high achieving complex kid with LD, ADHD and anxiety. And we were trying to start early in the college process and it kept stalling and it kept stalling and it kept stalling. And at some point, she finally kind of acknowledged, I'm scared of everything they're going to expect of me. And so she was stalling in the process because she wasn't because she because of her anxiety. So can you speak to that a little bit, that dynamic between we kind of want to start early, but we also kind of got to meet that their expectations. Yeah, I hear this a lot from from yeah. from kids and parents. You know, kids are disengaged from the process, and the parent wants to get going with it. And but I've yeah. also heard it from parents who are like, "I don't want to be that parent who puts, who makes everything college, college, college." You know, and right. but I hear the anxiety in their voice. And from my perspective, if you have more information, you don't have to be as worried because you have you have a tool right you have information this is how it works this is what to expect these are the different options it doesn't mean you have to make that final decision and choose you're just getting information as you're going through so that's kind of my perspective and what I'll present to people but usually when they come to me they're ready because they're hiring somebody right they're like they've identified that they're ready to to okay. to do this um, yeah go ahead So let me frame the question differently. What if, so my kid was not ready in ninth grade or 10th grade. And it just, every time I even mentioned it, it stressed her out. So I just kept waiting and I would, you know, I would go to the parent nights or whatever. And so I got the basic information and we did, you know, like a look and see tour where I took her to see colleges that I knew she wouldn't apply to way early and that kind of thing. Um, just for her to begin to know what's the difference between a state school or a, you know, rural school or whatever. But what do you say to the parents who haven't started early? Because in our community, most of our parents are going to be starting this conversation and listening when their kids are in 11th or 12th grade. I tell them you're right on time. 
Okay. Yes, they are. <laughs> You're right on time. Right. What did I tell them? You're right on yeah. time. <laughs> My job, when they're calling me and they're asking for help, you know, I, I'll I'll say, you know, of course you could have started earlier, but you're here now. And this is what we're going. These are the steps we need to take. We should do them quicker. You know, you might do your college visits over the course of six weeks. You didn't do it over the course of three years, but these are the steps that need to be taken and you're ready to do them now. Let's do them. All of my students find a home and they they're happy. I think it's more stressful to start later, but if that's when the student and the parent are ready to do it, that's when they're ready to do it. So they're right on time. So I want to get again, because not everybody's going to, we hope people will take advantage of your services and and we'll find you, Michelle. And there's going to be a lot of parents out there that are just looking for general information about working their kid through the college admission and selection process. Are there a few key things you would say, parents, don't, don't forget X, Y, and Z, or here's some things that are more practical generally for folks. Regarding just the whole process in general. Yeah. Yeah. When you've got complex kids. Yeah. Like Mm. if I never talk to you again, parent, here's what I want you to know. Oh, it's going to be okay. That's what I want them to know. This is going to be okay. But they want to know something really practical. Um, I think visiting colleges can be very helpful in, in a number of ways. One, if you get your child excited about the process. Two, when you go to the information session, you'll be learning about the admissions process, not just that particular college. So that could be a good way to gather some information. And you're really working on just identifying your child's preferences and your preferences for them, right? What what is it that they're looking for? Like you just had a state school versus a rural school and to really just compare. So like my best advice if, if people are starting early or whenever they're starting is get on campuses and go see them and see four at least. That's what I would Even, recommend. So, so what do you think about that idea of start, start, if you're starting early, start with schools, they're probably not going to apply to just, just because it gives them exposure to the campus without the pressure of, am I going to go here? I think like I that did it when we work. traveled. Yeah, when you're traveling and you're just going, I think that can work really well for some families um, because they just see some families just have an interest in colleges and an interest in college tours and they find that experience fun Mm -hmm. and others are like. Let me just do it the minimum amount possible. I only want to, why would I go to one that I'm not, my kid is no way going to. And then I hear different things about different resources. So I advise differently depending on who I'm talking to and how busy they are. And, but my goal overall is get your child to campus because there's just so many great things that come out of it. They get excited, not just about where to apply, but they actually do a better job with their applications when they visited more campuses. It's more real to them. They're more engaged in that process too. And they've learned from the different people, not just me, their parent and their guidance counselor or school counselor, I should say, but they're learning from the admission, the people at the college. This is how it works. This is what they're expecting from me when I actually do the work. So kids often are less likely to procrastinate when they've gone to see some colleges. Um, So 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 that's real. Great, great advice, Michelle. The the other question I want to kind of try to get to, because I get this from parents a lot, is the whole role of disability services. And you mentioned this earlier. A lot of these kids do have 504s and IEPs. And a lot of these kids don't want to have 504s and IEPs. And the whole sort of, I'm going off to college. I shouldn't have to go to disability services. I don't want to go to disability services. Everybody will know I'm going to be an outsider. I mean, there's this sort of, so what's the, I mean, how do you coach parents around? How do you help your kid get to the point where they are ready to accept help from disability services or make the decision about whether or not to proceed to get some support from disability services? Different ways. Um, Sometimes I talk about, What did your child need when they transitioned from middle school to high school? Sometimes now that they're making that jump again, more independence, harder schoolwork, they're going to need similar kinds of supports because sometimes people want to talk about, well, let's go back and see how they do first and see if they're cured. I put that in air quotes, right? Everything's better now that we're at a different school. And it's like, no, no, I try to help them understand more support is better at the beginning. And then what's not needed, you can pull that piece away. The other thing that I do is make sure when my families are visiting campuses that they're spending a real full day there. They're not just rushing from one campus to another and making an appointment with the Office of Accessibility or the Office of Disability so that they and their child can see the space, 
see that meet the people, find out what what's expected. And I think one of the things they're going to learn is that campuses welcome neurodiversity. Lots mm-hmm. of people have learning differences. Yeah. It's less of a stigma in, in college. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be this whole just different way of that it's being spoken about, yeah. you know, that people are going to talk to the child or the student, I should say, not the parent as, you know, they'll talk to you too when you're going to, you're going to be there, but as a parent, but um, you know, the focus is on the, student. it's just, it's a different experience. I mean, and sometimes so I'll so let me to, speak to directly to that question, yeah. if I may, because because we're running, we're we're near the end of our time, and I really, oftentimes parents will say, "But if I go to disability services, that may interfere with my kid's ability to get into the school." So, will you speak directly to that? If they it go while not. on a visit, okay, it will not. The only mm-hmm. way it could possibly this, it will not in that the office of disabilities is not communicating back to the admissions office and all, but. No, don't say that more clearly. You're saying that and people don't really get that. So it'd be really the Office of Disability. I want to say they're not talking to admissions. They're just doing their job, which is sharing information about their services with students. I want to say this really clearly. It's not just that if you disclose your learning difference in your application, it will not be a problem in terms of getting accepted, it could help you get accepted. That's what I want people to know. Colleges are looking for all kinds of diversity on campus. And one of the things that they want is neurodiverse diversity on campus. If your child is neurodiverse, they want them. Those kids have amazing skills and strengths. And that is wanted by universities. They want to graduate those students and celebrate those success, those successes that those kids have. Beautiful. So um, I can't be more clear about it. Every time I speak in a webinar, wherever I'm talking, and people are really struggling to hear this, but it's true. It's, oh, your kid is going to be wanted by colleges. Oh, what a what a beautiful close! I love that. So, so let's tell people how they can find out more about you. Where would sure. you like them um, to explore? I, I, I have three things I'd love to share. So one is come to my website, thecollegespy.com and sign up for my newsletter. I send a weekly newsletter and it's for all students, but um, I have a lot of people tagged in my um, MailChimp LD. Uh, for learning differences. Um, And those people come to me through my Facebook page, Parents of College Bound Students with LDs, ADHD, and ASD. If you sign up for that Facebook, um, it's not a page, I'm sorry, it's a group. If you sign up for that Facebook group, I'll know to tag your email as LD and I send a special newsletter um, periodically to just those parents. And the third thing I want to tell you about- And we'll put that in in that link in the show show notes, everybody. Yeah. The third is that I teach a class. It's very inexpensive. It's called College Admissions 101. And I I teach it every few months. Um, It's for parents. Students are welcome to come too. I usually get parents of grades 9, 10, and 11 coming. This summer, I am teaching College Admissions 101 for parents of neurodivergent students. I had so many people come to College 101 and ask so many questions um, about LDND that I said, I'm just going to talk about all of these topics through um, an LDND lens. So um, that's in July. It's Thursdays in July. It's four weeks. There's a recording you can find on my website. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Awesome. Michelle, we've talked about so many different pieces of this. Is there anything we've missed? Anything that you want to either go back to the, to reiterate or, or any, any of those juicy questions that you get asked all the time from parents that we want to make sure we close with? Your kid's going to get in. I want people to know that they're going to get accepted. It's going to be, they will, they will get in. Doing well once they're there and having all the right supports is another piece of the conversation. Maybe we can talk about another time, but in terms of acceptance, there's so much fear about not getting accepted when your child is complex, but they will. Beautiful. That's a great message. I love it. Thank you. Do you have a favorite quote or a motto to close this off with, Michelle? My favorite one, or at least the one that I repeat to kids all the time is nothing is set in stone. You can make a change. Mm. Mm. That's really powerful because so many kids feel like if they, if they mess up at the beginning of high school, then they're, 
then they're doomed. And the truth is that what schools are looking for is the progress, right? Yes. Or they're afraid. I can't pick a college because I might pick the wrong one. You hear that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, they're scared. And it's not, I mean, it's not easy to switch colleges, but it's not unheard of either. So, um, well, sometimes it is easier. I had a lot of friends who, who got in, who, who transferred in, but could not have gotten in initially and then transferred in later. So. Yeah. Different ways to do it. Michelle, thank you so much. It's been delightful to talk to you. Thank you for your time and your presence here with us. Yeah. It's Thanks been a lovely conversation. And to those of you listening, um, take a minute. What's your takeaway from this episode? If you're tuning into this, chances are you've got a kid somewhere in that high school realm or early college. Um, what's one insight that you've taken away from this conversation with Michelle that you want to take forward with you into your week or into the next, maybe even to the next year? <laughs> what's your insight? What's your aha? And thank you for being here with us and, and joining us every week. Thank you for everything you're doing for yourself and for your kids. At the end of the day, you make a difference. Take care, everyone. Have a great week. You've been listening to the Parenting with Impact podcast with Elaine and Diane. For more information on the Impact Parents community or to join Sanity School for Parents, please visit impactparents.com. If you like what you've heard, please share this podcast with friends who need similar guidance and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. For the essentials of Elaine and Diane's coach approach to parenting, download a free tip sheet at impactparents.com slash podcast. Behavior therapy training for parents is actually recommended as a first line treatment for complex kids. For information about Sanity School, our training program for parents or teachers, which has helped thousands of families around the globe, visit impactparents.com slash sanity school.